Have you run into a situation where your board won't power off? Or when it's off, it won't power on? Initially, I contacted customer support, and they asked to see the battery. They pointed out the red sticker on the battery, indicating that it had gotten wet and needed to be replaced. So I ordered a new battery, plugged it in, and... Oh, what the f***? So now what? I have heard of other power button failures, so that could be a potential source of the problem. We're going to take it out and give it a close inspection. Since there's nothing to lose at this point, let's see what we can find. So let's take off the shrink wrap and see what we can find under there. Okay, that looks good. On to the next one. Ooh, hello. Okay, as I was taking the shrink wrap off, I could see that this side of the jumper wire was in fact disconnected. That could be the cause of our problem right there. We're gonna solder this wire back into place. With the jumper wire reconnected, let's plug it back in and see what happens. Okay, we're gonna turn on the remote. First, we're gonna test it with the new battery. Cool, it works. Nice. Okay, now we're gonna test the old battery with the red sticker. All right, we're in business. Now that we've found the problem, let's see if we can't make that connection stronger. For this, we're gonna need soldering iron, solder, two millimeter and four millimeter shrink tube, an X-Acto knife, some 26 gauge wire, and a heat gun with a low setting or a hair dryer for our shrink tube. First, we're gonna remove the old jumper wire. Then cut a piece of your 26 gauge wire about an inch and three quarters or 45 millimeters long. We're cutting the new wire just a little bit longer so that we have a little bit more room for our shrink tube. Remove about three millimeters of silicone insulation from each end. Tin each end of the wire with solder. Solder one end of the wire to the vacant tab on the switch. Cut a 10 millimeter piece of the two millimeter shrink tube. Using a pencil, stretch out as much of one end of the shrink tube as you can. Starting with the stretched end, slide the shrink tube down the wire as far as you can. With your heat gun on a low setting, carefully shrink up the shrink tube. Take your four millimeter shrink tube and cut about a 10 millimeter piece of that. Slide the four millimeter piece of shrink tube down the open end of the wire until it's flush with the switch housing. Carefully apply heat and shrink it up. By doubling up the shrink tube, it stiffens up this connection, which should get rid of any flexing on the solder joint. 
The last thing to do is going to be to join this wire back onto the black wire, but in order to get the shrink tube over both of them, we're going to need to disconnect this black wire first. Cut another 10 millimeter piece of the 4 millimeter shrink tube. Slide the piece of 4 millimeter shrink tube over both black wires. First solder on the main black wire. Then solder on the jumper wire. Slide the heat shrink down so that it's flush with the switch housing and shrink it up. Okay, so there's our completed switch. Let's put it back in. With the switch reinstalled and the board functioning properly, we are good to go with the added benefit of knowing that's one less potential weak point to worry about when we're miles from home. Thanks for watching. Ride safe.